Hello and welcome to Design Education Talks, the collaboration between the team here of the New Art School and Design the Ducks podcast. Our guest today is Robin Landa. Welcome, Robin. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Fantastic to have you here. Tell us a bit about you and your work. Uh, I'm a distinguished professor in the Michael Graves College at Kane University in the USA. We also have a campus in China. Uh, the Michael Graves College houses two schools, the, the School of Public Architecture and the Robert Bush School of Design, where I teach. And I teach design, I teach graphic design, promotional design, advertising design. I run the advertising program at the university. Uh, we're the only BFA in advertising in the state of New Jersey. And I write a lot of books and I'm a brand strategist and designer. Oh, fantastic. Fantastic. So tell Thank us about you. your latest project. What are you working on now? Right now I'm working on the fourth edition of Advertising by Design, which is the only book about the creative side of advertising about art direction and design. It's published by John Wiley and Sons, and it's been translated into Chinese and Spanish thus far. Uh, and um, it, it's a really exciting book because as you know, the industry is changing as we speak. And uh, the communications industry is kind of merging with graphic design. And so it's, it's really fascinating with social media and digital platforms and emerging technology, AR, VR, just fascinating discipline. So tell us, tell us a bit more about the book. It's very exciting. Sounds fantastic. Uh, so in the book, I cover everything from how to conceive an idea, how to find an insight into the audience upon which to formulate your idea, all the way through uh, design, compositional uh, principles, how to select imagery, how to art direct. I interview a lot of top professionals, um, creative directors, chief creative officers, uh, young art directors and uh, seasoned creative directors in the book as well. Lots of information. It's really a, a go-to book for the discipline. Fantastic, fantastic. Do you find that um, advertising is, is quite specific, is quite separate from, from, from graphics, or do you find that it's more integral? I think now it's more integrated. I think with the advent of social media, it's hard to say what is advertising, what's promotional design, what's graphic design, who's creating the social media content. Um, there, there is an intersection like never before, I think, if you think about web design or mobile, who's doing that? I mean, there, there's a great intersection. I think the big difference is that in advertising art directors, have to all day long generate ideas. Uh, so it's not ideas for a logo and then you work on the logo for a very long time. It's a constant idea generation process. Um, although you're on a team, you have a partner usually with a copywriter or you're on an integrated team with uh, uh, information technologists or digital experts, but it's still this constant need to generate ideas, unique ideas, branded content ideas. It's, um, I find that very exciting. Absolutely, absolutely. Tell us about your journey into teaching. Uh, well, I started teaching when I was in graduate school. I had a fellowship and I was very lucky because the fellowship allowed me to actually teach an undergraduate course in color theory. And so that was my very first time teaching freshman. Uh, I was, uh, I guess it was my first year in graduate school and um, I loved it. I just absolutely loved teaching and it was just a natural for me. I love the, I love, I'm very excited by ideas and the discipline and I, I love transferring that to other people. Mm -hmm. I think that's why my books are, are I write so much is because it, it, it's an extension of my teaching pedagogy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Fantastic, fantastic. So tell us about um, the, the way that the graduates uh, or, or in the way that the advertising world has changed and how can graduates adapt for that and uh, uh, get into, into the industry? 
It's very important to be what I call a nimble thinker, that you have to be able to think quickly and nimbly and be flexible and have many ideas. And you have to really, it's kind of an interesting discipline because you're not trained in psychology, but you really need to have insights into people because you have to know what will, what will resonate. You can't just hammer uh, benefits of products and services anymore without understanding what people want, where they hang out, what communities they're in, um, what what passions they have, what desires they have. So uh, art directors really need to have a good handle on psychology, which is, um, I guess, comes naturally to a lot of art directors. And you have to learn to be an ardent observer, watch how people behave, see what they do, because finding that insight into their behavior is crucial to coming up with an idea that will resonate with people. And, and today, people are advertising savvy. So if it's not authentic, they're going to smell a fake idea a mile away. <laughs> Fantastic. Are you incorporating the copywriting side of the industry into your course? Uh, we talk about intellectual property somewhat um, because people have to be aware of what is their property, what is not their intellectual property, but not that much. Hmm. Uh, copywriting, copywriting is taught as separ separately? Oh, copywriting. Oh, I'm yeah. sorry. I was thinking intellectual property. I apologize. Oh, oh yes. Yeah. Yes. Actually, our program is unique because we don't have a copywriting track. So there aren't people specializing in copywriting. Therefore, all of our art direction students have to take courses in copywriting. And they almost become their own copywriter. Um, it's a kind of unique approach. Most of the portfolio schools and design schools have a copywriting track where the art director, art director students team with the copywriting students. Mm -hmm. What we do is have them do it on their own and um, they can almost switch hit. Okay, okay, but this- It makes the, I'm sorry. Sorry, go on, go on. No, it makes them really good writers uh, and good thinkers. It really gives them better insight into how to do both sides of the creative team process. Uh-huh. That's fantastic. I mean, in the industry, usually copywriters come from all walks of life, and it's uh, it's a point of conflict. I mean, uh, in a way that if they're not uh, designer trained, so it's uh, it's a funny one, you know. From uh, yes, it, it's a, it's a it's a tricky area of the of advertising when you know you get fantastic copywriters, but then of course they have a they have an idea on on the design, and then they <laughs> yes, you know this absolutely. Uh, but it's uh, advertising fantastic uh, field. How has how has it changed in your opinion? Uh, um, well, it, it's so different in terms of where people spend their time. So television viewing is down tremendously. So people aren't seeing television commercials. In fact, my students, Generation Z, uh, hardly watch any television on a big screen at all. If they watch any programming, they're streaming it on their laptops or on their mobile devices. So... Uh, advertisers have to get to people in places where they hang out. Uh, and it also changed the money uh, uh, paradigm because in TV, you make a lot of money creating those television ads now. Uh, and you get the ad advertising agencies would get a piece of the media placement. So if an ad was placed on television, the ad agency would get a piece of that. Now that's not the case in social media or in on YouTube pre-rolls. It, it's a very different model. And so there had to be a big adjustment for a lot of the ad agencies. So it's just really people, people's viewing habits uh, have changed tremendously and, and, and ad agencies had to adapt to reaching audiences where they are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Probably the only, um, television program that still gets huge viewership is the Super Bowl in the United States, where you get everybody at once. And people actually look forward to the commercials because they're so entertaining. Of course. 
expensive. <laughs> Very expensive. <laughs> if there were no limitations, uh, is there anything you'd do in, in, in education differently? I think I would have um, a kind of vertical model where an agency actually resided in our design building. Mm -hmm. And students could intern and agency executives and creative professionals could work side by side with the students. I know that happens in different parts of the world. It, it, it doesn't happen um, in New Jersey or, or New York that I know of, but I think that that would be a really good uh, way to do it. Also for our graphic design students, I think if there were a design studio uh, in, in the building where they could uh, intersect the business and the education, that would be a great new model for students. Internships, externships, mentorships. I think it's very important for students to have mentors beyond their faculty. You know, we all mentor students, but to have an outside professional, it would be wonderful. How has the uh, distance teaching impacted on your, on, on your teaching and learning? Oh, it's what impact? And I'm oh, sorry. Distance, distance teaching impacted. Oh, gee. <laughs> well, you know, like, as you know, and, and everybody else in the world knows, it was an emergency situation. And so unlike places like the Open University, where they spend years formulating an online course, we had to do it in a matter of days. And so I kind of refer to it as remote learning as opposed to regular online distance learning because we were just all thrown into it. Uh, I had to change the way I teach in order to make sure my students were okay. Um, our formula is that it's in, when we're in face to face, it's uh, six hours in a room together. So I spend six hours in a studio class with each, for each course. And so here, to have synchronous six hours on screen was not a great model. Um, and, and so I tried to figure out ways to break it up. Also, I'm very much about collaborative learning and active learning. And when the students are in the classroom, it's wonderful. They're in teams and they collaborate and they sit together and they help each other. It's a wonderful, wonderful atmosphere. Here, and there, everybody's in their own room. And so I had to figure out very quickly how to get them to collaborate. And I also, we all, we all had to deal with their sadness, right? They were, they were sad. Um, and I teach seniors, graduating seniors, and here they weren't going to have a graduation together. They weren't going to have an in-person graduation. And, and then some people's families were, were directly impacted by the virus. Um, it, it was it was really trying, as you know. Um, but what I did do was was uh, incorporate a lot of exercises, uh, design exercises, and thinking exercises and creativity exercises that would break up the the course. And I, in fact, tried to think of ways to incorporate the outside world into their rooms. So we used Google Maps and Google Earth quite a bit, and that was very successful uh, to have the feeling of, of reaching out into the world and we could visit places and, and think about how we could incorporate that and hacking other technology. Um, so I really did switch how I taught. And, and if, if we are online in the fall, I will have to rethink a lot of of how I normally teach in person. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's interesting times. So you, are you going to do, are you, are you doing any blended teaching at all or is it fully online right now? Well, we, we're done with the, uh, fall, with the uh, spring semester, the, the well, summer, well, I'm sorry? I'm talking about September, will we be doing any blended? Oh, September, we don't know yet. Okay. We don't know yet. The university hasn't made a decision. We are preparing to be ready uh, for full online, if that happened, if that need be. So we are all training in Blackboard, which I don't think is good for studio classes, but that, that's the mandate. Um, and so we'll we'll be ready. I don't think. I think for a lot of people, it's it's very difficult because 
online learning is a different animal than face-to-face. And you really have to understand, especially a studio, um, you know, where, as you know, that that in-person interaction, the serendipity, the teams, all of that, you know, you sit down next to a student and you work with them and it, it, it's just different. Um, so it, it, there's a huge learning curve, I think, for a lot of studio teachers who never taught online before. Absolutely. How can our viewers and listeners find you? Uh, I have a website, robertlandofbooks.com, and they can reach me at the university, uh, rlanda at kane.edu. I'm very accessible. In fact, I just posted on uh, in the, uh, there are a couple of groups on Facebook for design educators. I just posted that if anybody does use my books, graphic design solutions or advertising by design, I'd be happy to help with curriculum and, and course content. Graphic Design Solutions is actually, I think, I may be wrong, is the first interactive graphic design book ever. It's in an interact on an interactive platform, which is kind of cool. Any last piece of advice you'd like to leave us with? I think um, as we move ahead, I think it's very important. I think this, the pandemic proved how important it is to be a nimble thinker, to be able to uh, adapt to change rapidly. And uh, I think that design helps people do that. So nimble thinking, imaginative thinking is, is creative thinking is critical. Mm-hmm. to everything that we do coupled with strategic and critical thinking. Wonderful. Wonderful. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. I'm honored. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.